In this presentation, we're going to look at the skewness measure for the gamma distribution. Consider the following measure of skewness. This is the Pearson skewness coefficient, okay? For a unimodal distribution, SKP, so SKP, I think that is uh, a re uh, in reference to Pearson. SKP, which S essentially, uh, is the mean minus the mode over the standard deviation, okay? So the value, determine the value of the skewness coefficient SKP for a gamma distribution with parameters alpha equals 1.6 and lambda equals 0 0.2. That is the shape and rate parameter respectively. Uh, so in case you are wondering if it's the shape and the scale parameter, uh, comment on why SKP is a suitable measure of skewness for a distribution with one mode. Okay, so essentially what we have to do to just to start off with here is just a, a, where the gamma distribution is parameterized with the shape distribution alpha where alpha is greater than zero and the rate parameter lambda where lambda is greater than zero. Essentially what we have here is, sorry they didn't come out so well, but essentially it is alpha, the expected value is alpha over lambda and the variance parameter, the variance value, the variance estimate is alpha over lambda squared okay so in this case we have 1.6 over 0 0.2 that gives us 8 and the variance is going to be 1.6 over 0 0.04 and if you work that out that should be 40 okay the standard deviation is the square root of 40 which is 6 0.325 okay now so those are two parts of what we need the mean and standard deviation but what we also need to do is calculate the mode and to find the mode what we need to do is maximize the probability density function okay so if we were to look at uh, tables or look up and sort of see what is the Evaluation or what is the expression there? That's just the, the raw it in its raw form there where y is greater than zero presume or you know, so essentially this in its raw form there. That is alpha to the power of lambda over gamma times alpha times uh y times alpha minus one times the x e to the minus lambda y. It's obviously a very complicated looking expression there. Okay. Now, what we're going to do here is just to actually make life simple for ourselves. It's actually just reading it out was hard work. What we could do is actually maximize it. But similarly, what we could do is maximize the logarithm, okay, and find out what that is and let that equal to zero. So that's a sort of a tactic you can use with these complicated looking expressions there. Okay, that's what we're going to do in this case. So what we're going to do here is what we have there is three terms uh three well there's actually four terms there so we have above the the fraction line we have uh lambda to the power of alpha y times to the power of alpha minus one and e minus lambda y and below the the fraction line we have gamma y essentially what i'm doing there is what we're going to do is split it up into four additive terms there okay and then what we'll do is maximize that, okay? So the log of the probability density function there is and applying some extra laws there. So alpha, the lambda to the power of alpha, get the logarithm of that, that is equal to alpha times log of lambda, okay? So that's the first one there. Uh, minus log of gamma of alpha, okay. Uh, similarly, what we have here is this expression here, and we do something similar, log of y to the power of alpha minus one, that is equal to alpha minus one times log of y. And finally, the log of e to the minus lambda y is just minus lambda y, okay. So those are the four, that's the expression we written in terms of its logarithm, okay? Now what we're gonna do is uh, let that equal to zero. So what we sent you to do is uh, find the derivative of that and let that equal to zero. Now a couple of these terms cancel out, which is great. So this is a constant, in fact, they nearly all do. 
So, um, essentially what we end up with there really is this expression here and that expression there, okay? So essentially what we do is integrate, sorry, differentiate them and let that equal to zero. And what we end up with is alpha minus one over y minus la uh, lambda and let that equal to zero, okay? And essentially all we have to do then is let this expression equal to zero and solve for y. So that is actually our mode there, alpha minus one over lambda. So, okay. Uh, you can also double check that by just uh, getting the second derivative of that. Obviously it's going to be negative and if it's negative, it's going to be less than zero, which is great. So for our calculation here, remember that alpha is 1.6, okay? And 1.6 minus one, whoops, 1.6 minus one over 0 0.2, that gives us 0 0.6 divided by 0 0.2, that gives us three. Okay, so our mean is eight, our mode is three, and our standard deviation is 6.325. That means, working it out, our skewness coefficient there is 0 0.791. Uh, brief comment there about the second question there. I think this is a long video, so I'm just going to read this one out. For unimodal symmetric distributions, the mode will coincide with the mean, and therefore deviations from this measure from zero will indicate a asymmetry. Also, the measure is standardized by dividing with the standard deviation to make it scale-free. Okay, so that's just the second part B. So essentially what we were uh, deriving there was the mode of the gamma distribution and also the skewness of the gamma distribution, which is the, the key part of this video. Okay, so the, the second part is really just theory.